everybody. Welcome to the Jim and Sam Town Square. I'm Scott King. Jim and Sam fans know me from the Forbes articles. And I'm joined, as always, by multi-Emmy award-winning television producer, Chris Cangilla. In this episode, of recapping week two of October 2023. And Chris, we have done this show remote the entire time it's kind of the only way we can do it with our schedules even though we're in the same state not too far away but i mean it 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 has its issues and we we kind of heard this week jim and sam going over issues they had during the pandemic when they were doing remote shows yeah you know we are what probably a half an hour from each other maybe 45 minutes and yet we still do it remote but you're a busy fella you're raising your kids and nice are you yeah so yeah it's crazy but uh, yeah, they were talking about the challenges of not only their show, but other shows that they've listened to where people are remote. And and I know that we have that same challenge only in the fact that we want to talk over each other, not in a bad way, but like, you know, you say something, I want to comment on it and you say something and, and, we, and the Zoom thing cancels it out. Right. So um, they were talking about how they've had those issues in the past, but they came up with a solution, right? Yes, it was a wonderful solution, um, and, and I don't think it'll get in the way of the show or not at all. Or the audio element is that Jim has signals. Now, I, I, I do want to go back and listen so I, I can kind of jot down what signals for each guy, because I do hope this is something that continues. But there was some, you know, Travis or <laughs> Mike. <laughs> So, so there's no, you know, there's no people know when they're they're being addressed and when they can chime in. And you know, I think maybe we should come up with our own, right? It's it, it, we got to figure out something. No, I mean we do a pretty good job. You know, we we let each other kind of finish, but I want to jump in on something. You want to jump in on something, and, yeah, and sometimes yeah. it's it, it, yes, it yes. Happens. So you know, and just to pull back the, the the screen a little bit on how we do this show, you know, we listen during the week. I listen, you know, driving to work and walking the dog and that kind of stuff. Usually, you know, um, on the on the app, a little delayed. And I make notes, and and I know you make notes as well. And then I send you my notes, and we kind of build an outline, you know, a rundown of the topics we want to talk about, and then we go through that, you know. And it's and it's the only way that we can really stay on topic and get through it in you know the time that we want to do this podcast in, so people don't get sick of us too much. But yeah, we uh, it's hard. I want to I want to I'd like to try it one day in the same room together. That would be kind of fun. That'd be me. awesome. I think we could swing it because, you know, we usually tape on Fridays. I do think we can hang out somewhere. Um, I just think about how I can fix the lighting in my basement. But, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, we never sometimes we might say a couple words at the same time. But kind of I think Sam had a really good point is that, you know, shows like Jim said, Kevin and Bean for for years were not in the same room. Uh, in LA, that show. And Sam was saying, yeah, when there's shows that do remotes and they're like too good at you talk, I talk. That's almost like it's too stiff. Almost, it's, yeah, it's like too stiff and takes the listeners out even more than if, oh, yeah, we just talked at the same time for a second. So I, you know, this is organic. This is we're, we're doing a show. How, we're, we're talking. It's how we do it. And, and I think, like you said, we do a pretty decent job on that. And while we're still talking about our town square and our podcast here, I kind of want to you know, petition our listeners and viewers for a little help. You know, I, the guys are kind of talking about this and and we've gotten such great comments from some of our listeners, like, you know, Razorlicious and uh, Miguel on, uh, you know, on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it these days yeah. and some other ones on YouTube. And I, I would love for people to engage with us a little bit more. So please, this is my, you know, plead to our viewers and listeners. And I know you feel the same way engage with us, drop us a comment on, you know, the social media or put it in the comments of the YouTube and uh, ask us a question, you know, what we can do better, what you want to hear, um, what you hate about Scott, not <laughs> about me, but what you hate about Scott. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just me. What you want us to do differently and, uh, and stuff. Now, granted, and, and I want to get your take on this too. We can't, you know, use Jim and Sam clips and we don't use Jim and Sam photos and that kind of stuff. We really want to make sure that you know, we're doing everything on on, on the legal ways of of, of sharing uh, information. So there's some things we can't do, but if we can do it, we want to do it for uh, you know the five of you listening to us right now. <laughs> we have we have a decent listenership. We're yeah, big we're Ireland. Uh, you saw early on through your research and the stats, Chris. But no, yeah, thanks to Razorlicious is on Twitter. Always always has comments, sometimes questions. Miguel as Miguel from LA, who the Jim and Sam Dank memes on Instagram, which we're going to talk about later, came up again. Yeah. So those guys are I, so supportive. Miguel was a great guest on the show, and we've had a lot of comments on YouTube. We 
want to keep them going. And I'm snapping because I want to let you know I want to talk. Oh, when you're okay. done. Let me, okay, let me let me hear. Finish. This is my okay, let me finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. There, perfect. We got, um, we got them down. But go uh, finish yeah, up and I'll if, go. If uh, if you have if you have not just questions but things you want us to explore, for instance, with Jim signals that we're doing. I think we silly Jimmy's back. Like, I hope he keeps doing this. Like we haven't seen a lot of silly Jimmy. I feel like in a while, and that's when he's at his best. Like, okay. Like uh, what, what's the, uh, come on now, come on now. And the signals. Yeah. And he used to have the cowbell with Opie and Anthony. So I, that's like when Jim's at his best and when he's doing his characters, which we're going to talk more about later. What do you want to say, Chris? No, I just wanted to go back and you're absolutely right. I love silly Jimmy and, and doing, and they've worked in Sam's little, you know, going gig, going that whole thing. <laughs> and uh, using that all week. But what I want to say one more thing about the uh, our little town square here on Spotify. Sometimes I'll put in a question or a poll for people about, you know, this week's episode. Do you think this or that? And there'll be a poll in there. So I know not everybody wants to listen on Spotify, but if you can go there and do the poll and then, you know, watch it or listen it to it somewhere else, that would be fantastic. All right. On to you. Um, I'm not going to do those. Go ahead. There you go. Um, you know, there was a big, I think they kind of started the week with a big celebratory day. Chris, how did you celebrate 1010 Day? Well, I celebrated 1010 Day by not having that station here in the Chicagoland area. And it's, since it's just a New York station. But no, I uh, I thought that was kind of funny how they were talking about it. And Montone had so much to say because, you know, I think Montone spent some time there as well. But we all know his dad was a big reporter and, uh, and guy at the 1010 Wins in New York City. So, yeah, it was 1010 Day. John Montone. Yep. Uh, it was, I think Mike was surprised and maybe even a little, felt a little guilty that he didn't realize it's like his 10, 10 day. It was uh, very funny. And speaking of Mr. Montone, he was, I, you know, I had, I didn't realize, you know, watching last Sunday's game with, with the Cowboys, 100%, no way around it. Deck absolutely choked. It was a terrible, abysmal performance from the Cowboys, uh, led by Dak Prescott. But Mon they had Monday off, so we had to wait another day for uh, Mike to have to answer the bell and answer for Dak. And he did not shy away from the criticism. And I was very proud of Mike for owning up to Dak's performance. Yeah, he accepted the 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 you know, taking it on and just going. Yeah, he's he's not good, and he should get the blame. Matter of fact, I know that you even tweeted or X'd it or whatever we want to call it, tweeted about it. Yeah, I yeah th that during that game saying, I wonder if we're going to hear from him. So, yeah, I mean, that you did. And it was hilarious. It was great. Right from the horse's mouth. And there have been some really strange things coming from the Hogan's mouth. And that's Hulk Hogan. And we've, I mean, this is, this is one of those things where, you, we love the interactions with the characters on the show, what's going on in their lives. But when they take events and Sam's obviously tied to, to the WWE and they throw in their two cents and they break these things down, Hulk Hogan for like years, especially post wrestling has just kind of made up these stories. And it's just like, it's things that are very easily provable today. Like the, uh, the Wembley. And then lately in a recent interview, he's saying he brought Simon Cowell to the U S and that either it was, it was Wembley or another like sick fan story he made up where he could like smell death on the kid. But I, I just wanted to ask you, Chris, like, is this a pathological liar or because, you know, re wrestling is a tough sport. He had a really long career, probably took some, you know, jolts to the head or is, is this possibly a, a CT thing? We know how serious that can be. Yeah, in uh, it was interesting that that Sam was on a different side than I would, you would think Sam would be on. You think Sam would be a defender of Hulk? He's and, a Hulkamaniac. And, yeah. yeah, and 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 with W, you know, WWE, but he uh, he most definitely thinks that it's ridiculous, and even brought up more points. And and then of course Travis and Jim play the foil of oh no, he's just uh, of course that happened. You know, he had a top ten Billboard hit for seven eight weeks. You know, he had. He could, you know, tell the EMTs that the, the sick kid in the in 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 the in the stands is going to, you know, need help because, you know, the EMTs wouldn't be able to see that on their own. That Hulk right. could tell from right. from wrestling. So, yeah, very funny uh, break in the in the show. And uh, and, you know, I'm not a huge wrestling fan, but I really enjoyed that part of it. Yeah, same. Here. I, I don't know. The current guys. Hulk Hogan was my that was my kind of hate. I actually saw him perform. They call it performing. I'm not even sure. It shows what a big fan I am I, at the United Center. I knew him as Thunderlips in the Rocky movies. Oh. So no, I it's it's uh yeah, it was fun. That's a performance a back there. There you go. Speaking of you know, sick boys in the stands, we had a sick boy in the hospital. Uh Mr. Kumia had some uh, I think blockage to his heart. I believe he had a procedure and little Jimmy went to visit him 
But, you know, unfortunately, ants may owe Jimmy some money now, Chris. Yeah, um, I, you know, I think probably and they're not saying much. Of course, he deserves his privacy, but I'm, I'm sure Ant probably had, uh, qu- you know, a bypass surgery. My dad had quadruple bypass surgery when I was a freshman in high school. So that's pretty traumatic. But that was such a long time ago that I'm sure the procedure is a lot easier. Um, Jim said Ant's doing well and recovering nicely. Um, but yeah, Jimmy said he, you know, he went down to the commissary and actually had a meal in the commissary down there in the hospital and enjoyed it very much. Do you remember what he had before I continue on? Oh, I know. Didn't he want a, uh, I think he had chicken and maybe a veggie. I think he wanted an extra piece of chicken. He was upset with the uh, mm. quantity of food in the cafeteria. Right. He had cauliflower. Cauliflower, that's right. <laughs> Burnt cauliflower. And uh, yeah, they wouldn't give him a piece of chicken with it. And I'm like, but just buy two meals. Anyway, yeah. uh, so he went and got uh, a couple of ginger ales and brought Aunt a ginger ale. Um, and uh, they enjoyed it together. But uh, the guys were joking that maybe Jim should, you know, message Ant that he owes him for the ginger ale and make sure that he pays him on Apple Pay. Just a little request, you know, pops up in his notifications, a little quick pay request or or Ant didn't make very much money when he was working on opening and Anthony. Anthony didn't do well for himself. So, you know, he should probably not have to pay Jimmy, but maybe we maybe he could. I don't know. I don't know. As you're talking gingies for the boys and, you know, Jim is down and out, whatever that cost was. So. Yeah, you know they'll, they'll have to they'll have to figure it out uh, amongst men. Um, speaking of Jimmy, I'm very glad, and this is a reason people should listen and remind us about stuff with the show through comments because I had voiced last week that it is October now, recapping the second week of October, and we had not heard Blood Manor. Finally, Blood a caller Manor. called in. And we got it. I hope. I hope this keeps coming up. You know, I'm sure travels go to what is it? What is it uh, uh, a door, do, dormy park or Dony Park? What was? I I can't remember that where he got accosted by the the teenage a girls. Group of it. wild teenage girls. He, yes. he almost fist fought. Um, I want to say dormy park, but uh, yeah. Well, I hope we keep hearing Blood Manor. Another another fantastic, silly Jimmy bit. Absolutely. That I love Blood Manor, and of course. October makes me think of Jocktober, one of my favorite oh. ONA things. I miss it so much. I wish there was a way for Sammy to bring it back just as a little tiny, you know, sampling of what used to be. I know he's trying to move on. As a matter of fact, I think a caller asked him how come he doesn't do the one question anymore. He's like, well, you know, I try to advance my career, you know, I'm trying yeah, to yeah, be, yeah. you know, so, uh, but I'd love to see Jocktober come back. Great so point. I like the old bits. It's October. It's spooky season. Let's get going. Absolutely. And it, October is something you can go on, on YouTube and get stuck in a, a rabbit hole. I mean, hours of just amazing, amazing stuff, just beating the crap out of these radio shows. And so I think real quick, I think Sam, I think Sam, you know, he he's the one who brought that to the show, I believe, in every capacity. Like, I think pitched the idea, did all the research, listening to the stations. It was that was his baby. So it was a huge undertaking. Yeah, yeah, huge undertaking. And one of my favorite things that uh, that Sam brought to the Absolutely. show. Absolutely. But yeah. I think is you if you hear him talk about Scorch, the Jack Tobert Scorch, Scorch, who was like kind of a, a mentor, even though he's like a weird guy to Sam. So I think Sam feels bad about that. I think he feels bad about, you know, how that might have affected some of the people on the station. Sam, he's got a conscience and, and they're kind of on the bigger and better things. Yeah. And, so- and, and as strong and as much as we love this show, maybe they're worried that the next generation will, you know, Jack Tobert them, you know. They just there's might. that podcast. There's that podcast, and like, who are they? I think podcasts or who whatever. Who are these podcasts? They have a nice yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so they've made fun of uh, uh, old Opie stuff. So hopefully they won't make fun of Jim and Sam. It's kind of like a version of October if you think about it. Yeah, and it was an ONA thing. It's a different show. Yeah, moving on. Jim is not moving on from Never. his posters. He's buying more, and I think he saw. I want to get your take on this. I think he saw an opportunity to buy more because furniture for the girlfriend is coming in so he can keep buying posters is that kind of what you took i situation? think it's like a give and take kind of thing yeah. like, okay <laughs> she gets furniture and a headboard he's gonna buy more kiss posters da, 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 da. but he did if you recall he did kind of chastise her a little bit because she likes laying by the fireplace even though it's still technically summer but lane or maybe it's just fall now i guess we just got into it um yeah, she likes laying by the fireplace, and he has a poster on the floor there, and he gets mad and like, no, no, don't touch the, stay away from the poster on the floor. So, there's a lot of stuff they have to kind of work in, right? They do. There's a there's a lot of workarounds. Jim's uh, compulsive buying of the kiss posters. He even bought like a. I think you know my mom does watercolor art. I think these big like binders where you can keep art or posters. It sounds like Jim's got one to keep, which is. 
I guess he's buying so many he's not displaying. You know, it's kind of yeah. like with my you know what he could collection. do. Yeah. He could do, and and I just thought of this. My mother in law, um, uh, her uh, first second husband, one of the husbands, one of them. um, had uh, he was an artist, and she has these what they're called flat files. Which if you think of a big filing cabinet, but they're flat. I don't know if you've ever seen mm. them. They're yep. tiny little drawers about this yep. deep. And I mean, this, you know, wide and they go deep in there so you can lay all the artwork flat in there. I know he doesn't have a lot of room, but getting the flat files, putting that in a storage, um, that would be kind of cool. I think so. I think that does work for something like that. And now Troy was alerted to all of Jim's purchases or, or many of them over the weekend because he follows a certain social media account, which would be Chris. That's a, it's the uh, Jim and Sam Dank Means, which That's is a guy, Miguel ours. from L.A. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> so, and speaking of Troy, he um, got got, you know, defended pretty, pretty uh, ferocious. Adamantly, yeah. 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 That was the word I was going to say. And I'm like, is that the, is that the best word? And it actually was the best word. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but he a caller took to his defense that like, hey, like, you know, especially to Sam and Travis, like, hey, you guys rag on this guy. But he uh, he can do some stuff. What did the caller alert? uh Trip. Well, this is a second, uh, or, you know, last week a caller defended him, and now another one is calling in. So Troy has his fandom out there. Of course, we're big fans of Troy because, you know, he engages with us on this show as well as uh, follows and and, and uh, listens to this podcast. But, yeah, Troy's great. And uh, the caller said, you better be careful, Travis and Sam. You give Troy a lot of grief, and uh, you pick on him a lot that, you know, you got to remember that he could break your guys' necks. And not only that, he'll take your women. I think, the, I think the second part is way more insulting. These guys have been married for years yeah. and children. They have family. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And <laughs> that led with the guy. Yeah, that led to a funny thing that uh, that that uh, they said, you know, with, with Troy's uh, huge sexual prowess. You know, Troy said, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm out of gas. I'm, just, <laughs> out of gas. I'm out of gas now. And Jim said, yeah, I could just see Troy, you know, walking down the feminine highway with a gas can trying to hitchhike. You know, he just doesn't have it anymore. He he just out of gas. That is amazing. And um, you know who's not out of gas when uh, reading from their book and your your commentary is going to be way more important in my ear. You're, you're the music guy. But I would have been so pissed if I bought tickets. Roger Waters said he's going to play off of a uh, very popular album, right? That's how I got fans to come. Which album was that? That was Dark Side of the Moon, I believe. Yeah, oh, I think you're right. And instead, you know, I work with I work with books as my uh, as my full time job doing publicity for books. And I will say that books bring out a very certain crowd They're, they they want to hear these readings they they go to barnes and noble to hear an author read or or do a signing but if, if rock fans come to hear music and they see a guy reading from his book for an hour and not playing music like i think they have every right to be very upset is that is that right chris 100 percent. you know we've gone to concerts and they're playing you know the band that we love is playing their new hits and you're like or not even hits but their new album you're like Ugh. you know i just want to hear their hits and uh but they have every right to do that because that's how they promote their album but to go and read from a laptop for an hour about your pet and other things. It's just ridiculous. And it's just pretentious. And and they had every right to make fun of them, uh, to front fun of uh, Rogers, you know, Roger Waters from uh, Pink Floyd. But then they also talked about other bands, you know, trolling their fans just for fun. You know, they'll go out and, and do the same song over and over again or whatever. And that was, that was kind of funny. Yes, it was. Um, it was also very funny and you know that there's there's so much going on politically it's so like just exhausting us i think i can speak for you too but uh with rfk this is another thing that like perfect guys to break this down rfk i just crank it up rfk uh jr announces his candidacy but before he does that his mic is on and you know he's got that voice where it's hard for him to speak yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's just having he's having difficulties he's like where's my where's my papers and then someone gives it to him he's like they're upside down and the audience because his mic is on is laughing you could hear them laughing um well it's the- weird because he had a headphone mic on as well as a mic at the podium right so is that because his voice is so bad i don't know so they did the podium mic wasn't on but his headphone mic was and uh, he's walking around and I guess, you know, we have the teleprompter and, and yeah, people probably know what those are, but they project the teleprompter on to these mirrors, window, you know, glass, I should say, that are on each side of the of the microphone stand so they can see their speech on the teleprompter and read it from there. Well, in, in projecting that, sometimes you have to have it reversed and backwards because it's a mirror and all that kind of stuff. So it was actually upside down. The words were upside down. So, of course, he can't read it. 
But Jim and Sam were right. Just say that. Just, hey, man, my speech is backwards and upside down in here. We're going to try to get that fixed. I'm going to try to get my speech over here. But instead of going, oh, where's my stuff? You know, it's almost Biden-esque. I, here's the here's the thing. I do think I do think um, this seems like maybe something Sam would have incorporated. Uh, but uh, sometimes Jim says like, "No, let's throw that in." But I I would have appreciated if now moving forward for a good long while, as the show is starting with the theme song, one of the face plants theme songs, that we would hear the drop. It's upside down. Yeah, <laughs> that is amazing. That is so amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I think they also need. I love the songs. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, they also great. need. They need to take away the Madonna thing, and uh, I'm just it's old they need now. To, yeah, yeah. They need to re- refresh that uh, little intro. Keep the songs. Songs are great. Moving them around. I love it. I'd love to see the face uh, face plants come back in and talk to those guys again. They could do a new jingle. Those guys are t- those guys are talented. But I, this could be a, a the thing for our listeners and and viewers to comment on. Like, what would you like to see in the intro? Some drops. Uh, yeah. Jingle, which, which like, let us know yeah, what drop what you know what sound from the week or yeah, you know yeah. last month or, or something the, like that, that yeah. whatever whatever is more current than madonna um oh so okay <laughs> before we get to the callers the uh another thing that is only these guys can break down um th- in the best possible way is biden's brother's leaked photo now i didn't i didn't go searching for that i don't nope. know if you did chris but i, I you know I'll, I'll take jim's description for it he does get very thorough with images like that um, let's just say there were a lot of pixelization to block out the area that would need to be pixelated so if you needed an area of this much to be pixelated it was more like this much you know and that's a lot of size there so yeah, the Bidens are uh, doing well in that department. Um, you know, not so much elite photos, but if they are going to be leaked, that's the kind of photo you want to be leaked. Yes. I guess Bri- Biden's brother is in fantastic shape at his age, too. So. God bless. Yeah. You got I RFK, believe- you got Biden's brother. I mean, hope we get there, right? I'm just doing push-ups with coffee in the morning. I believe yeah. Jim said the Bidens are all C, if uh, everyone... Yes, can- seems like that way. <laughs> uh, or you just, like, you leak that photo yourself and you pay a guy, like, a, a pixel guy to just pixel, like, the whole bottom area. Yeah, if I ever do that, I'm going to do the whole bottom half of my body and pixelate it and have underwear on, you know, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. But. I, I'm going to ask you to break down this. There's two guys, you know, obviously everything that going on with Israel and Palestine and, and horrible. the organization. Absolutely horrible. I mean, it's such like a black cloud is over. I feel like the world right now, and this is making it even worse, obviously. But there was two callers who called in. Um, somewhat different perspectives. I think we had Ari from Israel and Mohammed from Florida. You kind of remember the gist of their calls, Chris? Yeah, you know, and and I think this replayed itself during the week at another time too. But you'd have somebody that's very pro-Israel in talking about that, and then you have some people that are more pro-Palestine. And you know, Palestine's kind of caught in the middle a little bit. The the, the real, you know, according to what I know, and I don't know anything, Hamas is is really the the the, the bad people in this whole deal. So each one had a different take, and I don't want to get too political, but it, you know, it was interesting to hear what they said, and and Jim defended what he thought. You know, and 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 then went from there, and then they segued on to different things. But what what was really something that was striking to me is if you recall, and I believe it was Karen Mar- Margolis that was in last week. Oh yeah, right, right, yeah. And uh, she was talking about performing in Israel, and Jim said, yeah. "Yeah, you know, I should probably." She said, "You should do that. You should go and perform in Israel." And Jim was like, "You know, always worried about things. Is it safe? Is it you know? Is it you know? Is, you know no, no, you'll be fine, Jim." A week later, you know, if you think about it. It's not safe and it's scary there. So, you know, maybe Jim's fears aren't too far out of the uh, the realm of possibilities that maybe he is uh, precautious in the right ways, you know? Right. And, and one of his fears did lead him to uh, <laughs> slide into the DMs of a certain uh, gymnastics superstar who kind of became like a social media uh, influencer, I would say, with uh, Michaela Maroney. Jim did DM. He had that face. His- remember remember that, that face where it was kind of like, Mm, that there's like a meme about her yes. during the thing yeah yes but I, what was it was like um what was jim was concerned about a health condition that she's been vocal about and the dm did not go through because she does not follow him but no she's not following about, like, him health issue that and it was kind of feeling creepy a little bit when he slid into her DM, dms but uh said. yeah he uh he's you know jim has sleeping issues we all know about that and she is uh oh, she right. went on she went on saying that she was histamine intolerant that's what it was yeah. and takes some certain enzymes and, and jim wanted to know what enzyme she was taking and wanted to dm her but sure enough travis could just look up what enzymes are taylor uh michaela maroney uh taking 
to help her with her sleeping. And it was on the internet. Just give it a goog. And uh, he found that information. But Jim decided, no, he'd rather slide into her DMs. Which I understand wanting to the, the establish the connection there. <laughs> maybe so. But you know what can, can help Jim maybe soothe him to sleep is he has songs now. Jimmy's got songs. He found this, which I agree with everyone in the studio. This is an awesome song. I, I don't know if you heard it before. That, a tribal song you thought it's called Storm. You're probably right. By a band or a, either a band or a woman called Otakin. Is that something is that like right? that? Yeah, yeah. I, it was hard um, to understand. I'm not sure if Jim would be able to fall asleep to that because it was pretty driving, pretty. And there's a lot of kind of Yoko Ono kind of yeah, <laughs> you start pounding kind of stuff. Chest. Yeah, but it was uh, it was a good tune and it was it was interesting. It re- reminded me. I don't know if you ever watched uh, Walking Dead uh, when yeah. it was on TV. They would do uh, they'd go to break and they'd or even it would be in the um, after show where they kind of interview stuff and they have that kind of pumping kind of is almost like uh, electric dance music versus and combined with this, you know, African tribal beat thing. It was really cool. And, and that reminded me of it. But, yeah, everybody in the room said this is a banging beat. And usually Jim's just bringing in, you know, either, you know, Glenn Campbell or Kiss stuff to the party. But no, nah, he's bringing some current awesome things. And he also brought in another song. You remember that song? Yes. And I was going to say The Walking Dead, the first two seasons of the 35 were great. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the first that song was awesome. The tribal the tribal song was great. But what was very funny, it was kind of a decent song, the Italian song. But there's like an old man singing and he goes and Jim's like and he introduces it. He's like, I think there's a part in there that I always think he's saying hello, Chip. And the guy goes, yeah. hello, Chip. Yeah, it was really funny that he goes, I can't get past this. I love this song, but I can't. And they listen to it. And it's kind of almost like the guy has, like, if he was saying hello in a British accent where you go, hello, Chip, like hello. that. It's a little bit in there. And it, sure enough, it sounds exactly like that. And now I can't get that out of my head either. I'm going to download the, uh, the the Tribal Storm kind of song, but I'm not sure if I'll be putting the Italian song on my playlist. What about you? Uh, you got to maybe, you know, give yourself some time and, maybe. and jump into it. I, I might have to check out both. Absolutely. And I'm going to have to check out both these songs. The way that Sam has checked out Doug Bell and Doug Bell's podcast the last couple of years. Uh, I, I have I have a lot of thoughts here. First of all, I think, uh, I mean, huge, huge marks to Sam. All along, he's been supportive of Jim's characters. And this is not just like plugging because Jim doesn't, Jim doesn't really do characters anymore. And he's talked about like, you know, he doesn't do cameos. It's kind of like, ah, why? But Sam really does enjoy Doug Bell still after Jim hasn't done him uh, forever. And he never, Jim, you know, he, he would get that support from Ants. But there's a certain somebody who would be like, turn a cold shoulder to Jim's characters. So I, it's nice to have that support. I wish Jim would still do his characters. And I, I, I just, I don't think he's going to do them anytime soon. I think he likes when Sam brings up Doug Bell. But I don't know if he just feels silly doing them or he's just like, you know, he's domesticated Jim. He's on he's on to to different things. That's why I love the signals this week. See a little bit uh silliness, but I wanted to do his characters again. I hope he does. Yeah. You know, they pull it out of him a little bit in the studio. You know, they'll do an Edgar right. and they'll do, you know, a Doug. And, and he just gets so embarrassed about that stuff. But I just love it. And you're absolutely right. Jim, I mean, Sam has been such a supporter, supporter of those characters. He wants them to do more. You know, Sam is such a good marketer, too. It's like, you should do this. This the is what man. you should yeah. do. You should have that. This would be great if you did this. And uh, and if Jimmy listened to him a little bit more and actually wanted to do that, I think it would be great. I have some people in my life where they're a lot more talented in music than I am. And I just like, if you did this, you would be really good at it. I wish I could have the talent that they did because sometimes those people aren't driven in that way. They just are creatives, right? hundred percent, hundred percent, and you're right. Like Travis, everybody loves the characters, and it's like you said, he gets embarrassed. He he does. You you can hear that, but he also like would go on a TBS tournament with them and do a bunch of cameos and do a cartoon. So it's like he embraced it, and his fans loved it. He would talk about how Chip would sell more tickets than him to, to some venues. So it's a, it's an interesting relationship. I think a lot of it is that he, um he really commits to the characters. Like he really like will be in character when he's doing them and he'll talk about them. Like they're a different person. I think he got that from Otto with Otto and George, who was a big part of his career and helped him start out. I agree. Um, I know we're running out of time here. Should we skip ahead a little bit and maybe talk about Jim's love of animals? What do you think? Yeah, sure. And so, you know, he, he found an, an Instagram account 
I think, where there is it just dogs or is it a variety of animals? It's a variety of animals. It's called lovinganimals.dg and uh, has a lot of <laughs> photos and sounds and videos and stuff. They love like fox being petted. They make weird sounds and yeah. he just absolutely loves that. And then that led to uh, Travis talking about how they went. Uh, he took the family to go see owls. They went to go see uh, some live owls and, and pet them and that kind of stuff. So that was cool. And of course, I don't know if you caught the Instagram photo of uh, the Tefs with the biggins, if you will, on a yeah. on a night out. Yeah, it looks like it was maybe somebody's birthday, maybe Lisa's birthday. And it was Nicole, oh. Lisa, and, and then the boys and all four of them are in the photo there. And then I saw another photo, which I think had um, the girls only. So it was Nicole. Lisa and maybe Sam's wife, which we don't get to see very often. Yeah, I guess. But like, where is Sam? Like, this is only fueling rumors of of what these couples are up to. It yeah, a little, little weird. A little weird. We'll get to a little bit more about what Sam's up to with Nicole. Uh, yeah, and the friendship yeah. with the Teps though came out of nowhere. Like, is Sam being blocked out of this, uh, whatever these extracurricular activities are. I don't. Who I don't... knows? But you know, talking about these animals brought apart, uh, brought about uh, a question. And I think Troy actually asked this: like, Jim, when are you going to get a dog? And Jim said, well, we might be close. So I don't know if that was a planned setup thing or maybe it just led to Troy asking that. So I think Troy just think? asked it. Yeah, I think things yeah. happen pretty organically with them. I don't think they do. Jim, especially, they don't do a lot of show prep. Anything that's going on, Jim says, like, no, let's not talk about it. We'll save it for the show, which is great. Um, it, it, everything really flows that way. But I, I think that there was like a pause when Troy asked him. And then Jim was like, yeah, you know, I think it's going to it might happen. So. I think it's going to happen. I think Jim, this is my, my, he's not maybe doing his characters as much. So we're going to get a domesticated Jim who has this new furniture, still got his kiss posters and he's going to have a dog. I mean, you, you know how it is. It's another, it's another kid. It's another family. Yeah. member. It's going to be a great thing as Jim gets upset about what the dog does and doesn't do. And, and, and yeah, it's, it's just going to be perfect. Domesticated Jim is a new uh, Edgar and, and Doug Bell for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, Jim said he won't walk the dog. He's not going to allow the dog on the bed. He's not going to be picking up the poo or will he be picking up the poo? And I I have a senior dog. He's 13 now and he's really good at house training. But this week was not good. Three times he went in the house and like at 3.30 in the morning, he's not feeling too well. You could tell that he wasn't feeling too well, if you know what I'm talking about. So just dealing with that stuff is a nightmare. Um, but they do bring joy to your your life you, do you guys have a pet i don't think you do do you No. so i it, it's an interesting thing I, i'm trying to hit it quick here as we're running out of time but i'm allergic my daughter like was allergic still might be a little just to like dander i think she outgrew it but like she was same with me when i was little when you're allergic you kind of get scared of dogs because they make you sick so she was terrified and in the last like two years she absolutely loves dogs now so i love seeing that even though i'm still kind of keeping my distance because i gotta yeah. shower again you have to sure yeah, and then my one son was scared because she was scared but now he like loves puppies so yeah they, the kids love dogs they keep asking to get one Maybe down the getting, road, like we'll shots see. all the time or what yeah. i'm gonna have to get Who one later. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to put up a little photo of, of my dog so you can see what he looks like. He's a puggle, but has a lot of different things in there. And, uh, so yeah, love them dearly, but they are a challenge at certain times. Gotcha. Gotcha. Speaking of animals, you know, now getting to the stuffed variety, we know that Jim can like sometimes channel a bit, a little bit of rage, especially if he's like caught off guard or something with the uh, domesticated Jim situations arising with his girlfriend. I think she is playing with fire and has been for a long time now with this kiss the stuffed animal. You know how much trouble he has falling asleep and she's putting it like right in his face as he's falling asleep, like it, almost in a deep sleep. Like, can you believe she's still doing this and that he has to do this and that he's like even willing to do it, maybe even reluctantly? Yeah, it's it's a funny bit and I'm glad he brought it to us. He said this week that it's not just one kiss, but he has to go. <laughs> it's a multiple amount of kisses for this stuffed animal. Uh, I absolutely love it. I think it's so fun and, and it brings such joy to us because it's just hilarious that, you know, it's it's such a different thing for Jim. It's something he's probably been la lacking in his life. He wants somebody like this, you know, he's had women that are rougher and, and more, but not this sweet, loving kind of situation, too. So uh, I think it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. What's not cool is that his girlfriend is asking a really bizarre question. It's kind of become a recurring question. And it's 
something that maybe is like when kids find out about life and death, they ask, like my, my son had just kind of gone through this, my middle one, um, asking him, what if you die? Like out of nowhere, they're probably just sitting around watching TV or trying to relax. Like I want Jim to respond with, um, well, I guess you have to get a pretty good job. <laughs> I don't, well, know, that's like, what I was thinking too. Yeah. You know, um, it's Jim's choice and Jim can do everything, every, anything he wants, but I'm not sure that she has a job or is employed. I'm not sure what right, she does. Right. So, you know, she's living with Jim. She's a, younger than Jim. And, you know, it sounds bad. Jim is her meal ticket, you know, <laughs> and Jim loves her and she loves Jim and they're together. But will Jim put her in the wheel when, if Jim passes, if he does die? Who knows? I would imagine so. But so there's some questions on that front. But there's also, you know, just the same kind of person that wants somebody to kiss a stuffed animal as a person like, what if you die? What will you do? Will you re- will you get with another person? What if I die first? Would you remarry? That kind of stuff, you know. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah that can, a lot that can really take. Pick at your soul, um, with Jim. You know, he might get a little bit of a break. I don't think his girlfriend's going with him on. Uh, I the- think she is. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, but I think she is going with. with that's a nice probably. getaway. I mean, you're yeah. on a cruise ship. That's a nice little vacation there. Um, what, I think it's it's this upcoming is upcoming week or it's the 26th through the 30th. Oh, that's right. There's a Halloween party on. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, but anyways, Jim is he's very pumped. Bert has been awesome to Jim. I feel like you know Bert is super famous and really admires and respects the the comics like Jim and David Tell that came before him. Um, I interviewed him for Forbes. Anyone wants to check that out? We did talk a lot about Jim. Great but interview, anyways, by the way. Oh, thank you. Anyways, Jim, um, you know, happy to participate in these events. We know Bert gets all this food, treats everybody great. But whoever did the schedule, and I don't think it's just a Jim problem. I think it's all the comics on the cruise ship. Um, I think Mark Norman's gonna be there too. Yeah. But they, they, they're everyone and Jim are are. There's a show where they're at night where they're going up against Bert headlining. It's kind of like reminds me of like a Lollapalooza. Like which band am I gonna see? Um, yeah. I think it's just one night. I don't think it's that big a deal, but it was funny to hear Jim like heard the news on the show. It was like, ah, oh, really? How how does Jim not know his schedule? You know, he's so particular and worried about weather and getting places on time. How do you not know when you're going on, what you're supposed to do? Oh, I'm doing I'm I'm working on that day. Oh, I'm not working on this day. But yeah, he's uh I think the the he's going down, leaves out of Miami on like that Thursday or or whatever, and then Friday. Uh, he's not doing a show, but then he has to do a show Saturday, Sunday, and Monday um, of the week. And uh, yeah, the I think the the big one, I think, no, su- Saturday, I think he's okay. Sunday, he I think he's going up against Bert. And they talked about maybe it's just kind of an overflow. Like the people that can't go to Bert has to go to Jim. It's, right, it's right. He gets not, leftovers. Yeah, he gets the leftovers and he's like, no, oh, whatever. But, you know, Jim's Jim will be fine. And uh, and one night, though, we did find out that he follows Bert in the same room. So that'll be a big night for Jim, and uh, it'll be kind of cool. So I bet he'll absolutely crush that. He'll have he'll have you know Bert's crowd and momentum, and then Jim is just Jim can just destroy in any situation. Absolutely. So. I have a question for you on this because Jim's going to be gone doing this cruise. When are we going to get the Halloween costume parade? Do you think it's not going to be next week? Next week's the week of the 16th. Do you think it's going to be like the week of the 23rd before Jim does, or when he comes back? What are we going to get? Yeah, uh, man. I think they'll, they're, they're, it's already October. They're going to slide it in whenever they can. I think before, maybe. Maybe that Friday before he yeah, leaves. Or he I leaves on the so. 26th. So maybe the, ew, who knows, maybe the 20th or the 25th. I don't know. I just, I love that the is Halloween. a great question. I'm not Halloween. sure, but we it is, I think we've said before, it's probably the second biggest show of the year behind the Secret Santa. Absolutely. There's probably been some years with the Halloween parties more stacked just because of like a Mike Iconelli uh, costume, but uh, though Travis will, he'll make sure that's like on the, on the best possible day. That'll be, it has to be, it has to be in Coop will be in it this year. So, oh man, I I would imagine Coop's in it this time. Yeah. I've, I've, that's a great, I have a lot of faith in Coop to have an amazing costume. Millennial young Coop. Um, They talked about, this is funny, you know, (laughs) they played the, uh, they were just talking about like TV shows and movies this week. And they played the, I didn't even realize this is getting a a reboot, but they played the reboot for Frasier. I don't know what, do you know what like streamer is going to be on? I don't. I I I saw just a little touch of it and I wasn't sure if it was like, okay, Frasier episodes are going, old Frasier episodes are going to this streaming service or it was a reboot. So I didn't even know about it until they mentioned it on the show. Yeah, I'm not sure, but the trailer sounded terrible it's not Jim had the point where like they're just trying to force him to be this character and like 
today's world and it's just not worried i feel like kelsey graham's a great actor i feel like he's trying really hard and like the other ca- like main cast members went, didn't even want to do it so it's like his son at college it, it seems like it's gonna be a disaster i already feel bad for kelsey grammer who i met at a white Sox game when i was oh, covering cool. a white Sox game and he was super nice i was like oh hey how's it going he's like he's like i'm good how are you man i'm like good you want to take, you, uh, take a picture he's like, yeah no problem so like little interaction didn't bother him super nice that was that's very cool yeah he uh i think it was his idea to do this fraser reboot and that's what? fine he, he he can do whatever he wants he's really cool that's and a good rumor. actor and yeah but um yeah it's i don't know how i don't know how it's gonna work and i wish him the best because he say he's a nice guy from your interaction with him yes. but I don't think I'll be watching. Were you a Frasier guy? You're you're a smart, witty gentleman. Was that was that your cup of tea? I, I enjoyed some reruns. I did. Fr- um, I, I was working for an NBC owned station when that came out, and I think that was that must see Thursday night lineup thing, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, with Cheers or you know after Cheers and Friends. I can't remember exactly what other shows were on there. So yeah, I liked it enough. It wasn't something that I had to tune in all the time, but it was it was a fine show and and. They were kind of interesting because they'd have uh, famous people be the callers that would call into Frazier's radio show with a with a psychological problem. Yeah, so yeah. you you would get somebody really famous, you know, calling in as you know Joe Schmo and talking about that. So that was kind of tr- fun That's trying awesome. to figure out who it was. So yeah, it was a good show. Very very cool. They played what they kind of doing the TV and, and movie break. I think they went into somehow they got to this was this was one that was like all over the place, but I loved all the kind of like callbacks from a, a while ago they played do you remember the dan band did they uh, was it old school or wedding crashers it was old school, old school. yeah it was absolutely old school and yeah, i'm yeah, a yeah. huge dan band fan i uh, think you are as well so i so i thought they're very funny at the time then i started to think that they got kind of redundant they got super popular and i thought it was just kind of the same thing oh you're swearing but when they, they played the clip this week i thought it was so funny like i hadn't heard that in so long like that guy is so hilarious it was he great. In a certain f word you know yeah and and the the first time i think we saw him they were even like in other movies but i think the first major one was in old school and they're singing at the wedding that you know um will ferrell's character is at and you you hear the guy drop the f bomb during the song, and Will Ferrell goes, you know, it looks like, did I just hear what I thought I heard? Um, yeah, it was great. And I've gone into their catalog, and there, I guess they're just an L.A. band, right? Yeah. This uh, this Dan guy and brought this band together, and they go and perform, and people love going to see them live because they'll do. He's a good talent. It's a talented band. He's a good singer, nice. and they'll just drop f bombs and and inappropriate comments in the middle of these songs, and it's hilarious. It's good stuff. I think it's one of the reasons Total Clips of the Heart is my sister's go-to karaoke song for for decades now. Um, right. I don't think she drops that the, the f bomb, but yeah. And speaking of talented musicians and performers, there's some good Bonnie Tyler talk, and her voice. I don't know if you're a Bonnie Tyler guy. Her voice got okay. Gotten, that was it. Okay. And okay. I had to, I can't uh, do that voice. It'd hurt my voice. It's hard. It's, you totally wreck your voice. And I had to. That's something they played, and like I missed them saying it was Bonnie Tyler. Like I had to look that up who that was. Right, uh, that was Bonnie Tyler in that drop. And Jim is a fan, even though in the last what decade her voice has completely fallen apart. You know why Jim is a fan? Because it's back to where I'm a fan of things. It's actual musicians singing, even after they lost their voice. You know, Jim yeah. wants to see real performances. He doesn't want to say Usher at the. You know, Super Bowl. He wants to see Kiss, of course. But no, he wants you. He'd probably rather see Bonnie Tyler at the Super Bowl perform with a horrible voice than uh, than someone lip syncing. So yeah, it uh, it was uh, it was kind of fun to to listen to all of her songs and advice. It's just yeah, it's like she smokes six you know six packs of Marlboro all day. Rough. It's rough. Someone who's not rough but fresh is Young Coop, and he it was revealed that he was born. I mean, we probably could have done the math. We know he's like, you know, an intern and everything, but it was he was born in 2001. So now we're hearing people on the radio that we like enjoy. I mean, this is making me feel old. born after 2000. My son is born in 2000. My daughter's born in 2002. So right in the middle of those guys. And this kid is being, you know, funny on the show that I love so much. So, yeah, it was weird, but it, it's cool. And I think what one of the Cooper's biggest takes is he doesn't want to be involved in the show i mean he does but he doesn't make himself part of the show they bring him in all the time Coop, what do you think about that and he'll have something funny to say about um you know and i think why they found out that he was in uh born in in 2001 is that he wasn't familiar with any of these things for the most part of 
you know, I think we talked about it last week about the Beatles. I don't think he could name all the Beatles. He didn't know George Harrison was a Beatle. So there's stuff that he just doesn't get. And Bonnie Tyler is one of those things. He thought maybe someone from Foo Fighters came to his high school, but he couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah. Was it, it was, I think, was it the drummer from Nevada? I'm not sure who that guy yeah, is. Right, Big right. Girl. Come on. Come on, man. But I, I could use, you know, he doesn't, like you were saying, he doesn't force his way onto the show. It's always really organic and evolves in a very funny way. And that they use him the right way. I wouldn't mind hearing more Coop because he's yeah. not, he's not greedy. He's just himself. And that's, I still want to see, I want to see these guys go to one of his stand up shows, you know? That would be great. I just want to get their take on that. And even if he was bad, you know, give him a little bit of a beating because that's how you get good, right? Yeah, and they played his clip. Like, I, you know, he's probably got a little bit of that nervous uh, new green energy, but like some of his stuff is pretty funny. I think he's already a decent writer. Yeah. Which is, uh, the hard part. Um, there was only only one guest this week with uh, Mr. Selman. And I mean, he was great. Like, there was a lot of so many things to break down this week. It was a great week of shows. And I think Phil, maybe because he's not books so much, but like when he comes on, it's just a treat. He's just like this, this, like a little bit older New York comic who's just got his way of of saying and doing things. I'm a big fan. I really like Phil Selvin. Yeah. One guest, he was, he's grumpy. I love it. You know, he talked yeah. about, um, you know, when he loves bagels, we know that, and he wouldn't mention the bagel place because they weren't, you know, taking care of him. But then Troy went and mentioned them. So that was weird. And that, uh, you know, he had uh, promoted his gig by taking a photo of his laptop where the information was on his gig instead of just figuring out a way to promote his gig. He's just kind of old school and doesn't really, you know, know what he's doing. He did say some some things that were kind of funny. And one thing that I think he broke some news that we'll talk about a little bit, I think, is he said that Voss was more funny when he was a crack addict, which was kind of (laughs) kind of devastating, I guess. But then he mentioned that he's working with some guy that is helping Anthony Cumia write his next book. Next book. So are we going to get a Cumia book where you know he drops a little more dirt on stuff? I would, I would like to see that. Yeah, but- I think it'll be pretty gloves off, no holds barred now with where he's at and where things are at with Opie for sure. Um, before before we get to our line of the week, I want to make sure to talk about Sam and Nicole's podcast. I think you listened a yeah. little bit. It's just super interesting that they're doing this together. Jim has put it out there several times, double, triple, quadruple down, that he's not going to renew his contract. We're, we're in the last year of the show. Um, it's October. We're in the last year of the show. I mean, this is do, – do you think this is Sam's, like, backup? Do you think Nicole's coming to his house? They're doing this. Like, this is going to be his next thing. What? How, how do you see uh, this happening? So I've listened to – I think they have three episodes out. I've listened to the first two, and, and they're very good, you know, of course, to radio professionals. Yeah, I guess uh, – Sam has uh, taken uh, like the first time, I think, and I'm not sure many times when they record this, but, you know, they leave from work and Sam gives her a ride back to the house and uh, they record it. And then I'm not sure how she gets back to the city, but that's another thing. Um, But, yeah, they do these uh, from Sam's house. They're really good and really funny and uh, interesting. And, you know, and, and if you think about Nicole, she's kind of a version of Jim where she's a little wild and likes wild things. So yeah, it's 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 kind of cool, and she has to kind of rein that in for when she's on uh, Hits One. I think is the uh, channel that she's on. Yeah, with right. the morning mashup. Um, so yeah, it gave me some thought. So here's my take. We've talked about Jim possibly retiring and being done with his serious contract, and you and I have speculated who could it be? Could it be you know that they pair up you know Bob Kelly with Sam, or they pair up you know Mike Cannon, or one of those, or maybe maybe Ian. Although some people would be very upset about that. Um, I think, <laughs> I think it's going to be Nicole. If it continues at Sirius XM, you have two Sirius XM employees. I think they pair up, they take Nicole away from the hits one. They put her together with Sam and it's Nicole and Sam, or Sam and Nicole probably at that point. Um, you need a new perspective. It's nice to have a female on the show with Troy, with Travis, with Montone, whoever it is. I think that would be a fabulous show. Would I miss Jim? Of course I would. But if out of all those things we thought about with the who could replace Jim, this Nicole would be perfect. What do you think? I think Sammy B. Muffins is not somebody who waits around to see how things are going to unfold, who waits for things to happen. I think I think this has been this is in the works already, maybe feeling out serious. Hits one is huge. 
they get they get if Taylor Swift is at Sirius XM, they go to hits one, you know, she goes to hits one, like all the big musicians, they play all the songs. It doesn't have to do a lot of talking. They just kind of introduce music and do a little rap here and there. But yeah, we know she's got a a big personality. She's great chemistry with Sam. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're already kind of pushing this at Sirius and if Sirius isn't receptive to it in some regard. And this could be the reason for uh the 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 biggins uh side relationship here with with Travis and his wife. And um yeah, it's a way different show. It's a way different show. I don't, you're going to lose, they probably know they're going to lose some big gym fans and that's okay. They'll keep some, but it, it'll be a show that works and, and that, that it works for everybody. And it'll be fun to see it kind of take off if it, if it does happen. And it's kind of, you know, begs the question, what's, what's Jim going to do? Right. I think he's going to have a dog and, and furniture and Domestic. posters. He's going to do gigs everywhere. And he still has a UFC podcast. So I, I don't know if Jim's plan on doing anything else. I think he might want a little bit of a break even. Yeah. So if this does take place in this, we're talking a year from now because Jim's contract yeah. goes until October of 2024. If this does take takes place, I think it, the the if we think about the same type of show, it's not going to be a com- comedian comic based show where those come in because Jim is a big reason why those guys come in and they have this right. rapport. Right. But Sam and Nicole are both really pop culture experts in current stuff. So I see it more of the pop culture people. So we will see if this went through, I would imagine, and we're both kind of producers at this point. If this went through, it would be more current people coming through. So you won't get the Taylor Swifts, but you could get a musician that's on the up and upcoming pop music kind of thing or you know, a, a Kardashian type person from reality show, you'd see a little bit more pop culture stuff. Do you think that's maybe? I think that's a great go? point. I think that could definitely happen. I do think you'll see some comics though. I think you'll see some, some Ian Fidance. I think you'll see some, here's the scenario guys, but yeah. also the, it might be a long shot, but you know, like from O and A and, and being friends with Jim, like Sam knows Bill Burr, you know, yeah. like he knows, he knows guys kind of in that caliber. So if they're coming into the building to promote something already, it's, it, I think it'll be a stop. And, so, and Sam yeah. can hang with those guys. No problem. Not so taking anything away from Sam, of course. Yeah, Sam for sure. Can, can definitely be with those guys for sure. Absolutely. No, great, great, uh, great insight there. I think, Chris, I know you've been keeping your eye on the uh, on the new podcast. And I, I don't think it's just a little like, oh, let's try this for fun. I, I think uh, there might be something going on. So, yeah, yeah I think great you're stuff. right. And, um, you know, before we uh, sign off here, we got to do as we always do. Our line of the week. I have one. Do you have some finalists? Or you got one. I got one. You want to go first this week? I will. I will. And um, you know, you brought this up in the beginning of the show. It did. It's says Jim's quick wit. It happened when they were doing the break on uh, Troy, uh, saying that you know he ran out of gas as far as you know his uh, extracurriculars go before he was a uh, you know in a in a serious relationship now has a fiance. But um, let's see. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're talking about his uh, his legendary status, and Troy said, "I'm out of gas." And then Jim Jim said, "Yeah, Troy is walking down the feminine highway with a gas can, trying to hitchhike." That's, I mean, just it's so perfect. And I'm so sorry, fast. brother. We this is the only thing that we don't prepare. We talked about pulling the screen and letting people show how we prepare things. We always kind of want to surprise each other with the line of the week, and I yeah. stole it from you. I'm so sorry, I stole it from you because I enjoyed that so much when we were listening and and when we talked about uh, him being out of gas. Um, so I apologize, but at least we both know that that was a fabulous line. That's your line of the week as well. No, it's not. I, I just, I feel bad. I took your line of the week. My line of the week actually is from Travis, which he doesn't get a lot of line of the week, but this one made me oh. really laugh. They're talking about 80 year old Roger Waters, you know, reading his story about his pet on stage using this laptop, and Travis said, kind of in an English accent, "Hang on, I forgot me password." You know, <laughs> that was I laughed so hard when it when uh when he said that. That's a great as an one. old person that would have to you yeah. know I'm going to read to you from my laptop. Hang on, I got to find my password. You know, that was that was something funny for me. So I uh yeah I God I feel so bad I took your line of week. Maybe start sharing that stuff, but I just want to be surprised by you. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. A lot of it, you know, a lot of this comes from your uh your 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 research and your very uh uh you know scholarly notes let's say you you dive in you articulate and it helps uh, helps the show a lot and going with that thanks for everything you do chris i always appreciate it thanks for joining me again to break down some jim and sam and uh thanks to everybody watching and listening make sure to subscribe absolutely and and give us those comments man we really want to engage with you guys if you can and of course you know scott and i want to do this in person so we don't have to wait for each other to uh, talk about and we probably know about each other's line of the week if we did it in person together 
We'll keep on doing it this way as long as you guys keep on coming back to the town square. Thanks for watching and listening to the Jim and Sam Town Square. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell, not dog bell, so you don't miss an episode. And if you're just listening to the podcast, please leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate it.